Hello everyone, Anthony Samra from BeYourselfAndLoveIt.com, episode 65 of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast and another video on improving your communication skills. So a lot of people's criticism of small talk is, oh, it's so shallow and it just doesn't go anywhere. But as I've discussed a little bit in this series, the more confident you become in social interactions, the more you tend to steward social interactions and you can have a great say on the level of connectivity and the level that you meet other people on by setting a precedent by being the one to steward the interaction you actually get to choose that i want to talk about the fact that conversations like what do you do where are you from they're bound to come up eventually in fact uh, if you've been listening regularly you'll know that we already did a video on how to be prepared to talk about what do you do. You can check that one out if you haven't yet. But because that topic is gonna to come up sooner or later, you can actually gain a greater understanding of ways that you can take that conversation to make it more interesting. I've talked a lot about how you talk about yourself, and I wanna talk a little bit about how you can engage with other people on that topic, because you, probably familiar with the well-trodden path that goes, oh, that's interesting. How did you get into that? Who do you work for? How long have you been doing that? Uh, do you enjoy it? Where are you based, etc.? And uh, it often just ends in this stilted conversation where you don't actually feel any connection between you and the other person. And you might actually lose the will to live if they reply to you in a very boring, fashion but there is a road less traveled for these kinds of conversations and you could act ask a question like have you always wanted to do that since you were little or what would you say are the three most important qualities that someone needs to be good at your job or you could say something like really that surprises me I thought you would do something more like and put in the kind of thing that you'd predict they'd do that's likely to provoke a spicier conversation and that's a big difference these questions kind of demonstrate the reason why they work is they demonstrate that you're more interested in the other person themselves than the details of your job so think about that when you do go to ask someone about their job or where they're from how can you ask a question that puts the emphasis on them rather than their job and um, does it make you happy or fulfilled you could ask if they sound like they like it is that something you chose to do or your parent, did your parents pressure you into it? If you're feeling a bit cheeky, you can smile cheekily um, and ask a question like that. Uh, I remember sometimes when I'm out at a club or a bar, I would say something to someone like, um, when you were a little girl and the teacher asked you in school, insert name of girl, did you say, when, miss, when I grew up, I would like to be a cellular biologist or whatever obscure job they did. And that always made the conversation quite light, quite funny, and could elicit a giggle because obviously no one at school thinks they're going to be a um, cellular biologist. Well, maybe you did. Uh, another thing, did something happen to inspire you to choose it or did you just kind of fall into it? So the principle, the rule of thumb, so to speak, is try and think of questions that put the emphasis on other other people and um, do you want to expect how long do you want or expect to stay in that job can you picture yourself doing it in 10 years time so the the so-called predictable small talk conversations which are going to happen that's why they're predict can become deeper conversations and instead of just asking where you're from you can say how does living here compare to other places you've lived or what was it like adjusting to moving here? I could imagine that if I went to another country and I had to learn a whole new language, I would feel like this. Um, or when I first moved here, if you're not native, and then reveal something of your experience moving here, what was it like for you? So by setting the example of willing to volunteer, something a little bit more open, something less defensive than the uh, guardrail topics that were all habituated to ask the the normal questions that we all just ask by rote will actually take you into a better quality of interaction if you're one of these people who says i hate small talk because it's so shallow and um, instead of asking 
uh, what do you study? Uh, why did you choose to study that? Or how do you study? Are you a really conscientious student or are you a terrible procrastinator? And you can always, you can always rely on, when it comes to other topics, the kind of standard counselor questions, you can have them on your back, in your back pocket, like, uh, what was that like if they tell you something? How do you feel about that? Or how does that make you feel? Why do you think that? How did you reach that conclusion? Those kinds of questions. The idea is to get people to talk about their values, their feelings, their experiences, even better if you can, if you can go in narrow rather than ask a broad topic, but find out if you can get an anecdote out of them, so much the better. And that's the act of digging a little bit deeper. By the same token, like I said, you can set the example by learning to talk more about your own feelings and experiences and values when you're answering these kinds of questions. If you can, rather than just give broad details about your job or your location and things like that, tie it to you as a human being. Your hobbies, where you're from, where you live, where your name came from, what your goals are, all of these things can actually be used as a starting point to go deeper. Um, small talk is only as shallow as you make it. So take some time to relate your answers to yourself. Try and figure out, you know, what's the story here? What is the story about where I'm from in my life? How does that relate to me? How did I get here? Where does it relate to my goals? Um, there's, there's, there's always, the more human it is, the more engaging and relatable it is. So there must be something universal about it. Great things to look for, I irony, um, imperfection, stories where you almost got something but didn't quite, you just missed and now you're seeing where the next step is or, or you've seen where the next step is. Or if you went through a bunch of trials and tribulations and finally got something, um, something about like companionship, not feeling understood, uh, being misunderstood, even better, um, your passions, something uh, profound, some profound time spent alone, coming to realizations because of where you are, um, having talents finally acknowledged or appreciated, um, what you're getting out of the situation you're in, even if it's adverse, these are just examples of universal themes. And if you try and look at how you can tie those in to the things you do or the, the, the places you're at at the moment or you've been, then you're going to actually be able to say something that's gonna make someone feel like they're getting something pretty good from talking to you and it also will make them feel open. So I think that most of the time when people say they, they hate small talk, it's because they, don't fully know how to operate in social situations, myself included. I used to say I hate small talk. Um, I still find it challenging at times, but that's why I'm going out learning these things and I'm just re-communicating everything I've learned. Because you don't actually realize how much power you have to steward the interaction until you have some experience behind you. So if you're really dedicated, what you could do is, um, write a list of these questions that you tend to get. How do you do? Um, where are you from? What you've been up to? You should, as I've said at length in these over and over again, you should always remember something from this week. So you should be prepared to talk about something that happened recently or even something that you're about to do if you're about to do something. And by having that in mind to talk about, you won't get to dead ends as often because you've already got a, a recent anecdote to Chuck out if someone says, what have you been up to? Which they say a lot. Where are you from? Where do you live? Where did you grow up? What do you do? How did you get into that? What are your habits? What's your passion in life? What are you doing at the weekend or next week? Um, all of these things. Write a little list and see if you can take a little time to figure out what the story is. Post your answer to one of them as a comment. That's, that would be something I'd be really interested to read. So because you're liable to be asked them again, half an hour to an hour preparation, that might save you a lot of awkward conversations in future. Um, I, one simple thing you could do is you could just write a simple answer and then make 
a comment, and I'm just going to exemplify. So, you know, if someone asks where are you from, on one hand, you could say I live near Paris, but you're just giving people certain, not many, not much to go on. They can say, they can talk about Paris or near Paris or France or the French or Europe, but they're very factual. They don't, they won't take people that far. On the other hand, if you say something like, I live in a little town near Paris, it's about half an hour drive from Disneyland. I took my son there last year for the first time and he was thrilled, but we had to wait practically an hour in the queue for each ride. He seemed perfectly happy though. Look at that. Paris, near Paris, little towns, France, Disneyland, holidays, tourist attractions, children, long queues, pet peeves, all sorts of, you could get so much out of just putting a little bit more into your response. And that's an example from my little ebook, how to make small talk if you want to get it on Kindle. So what you do is you just, if you want help with this, you just write down an answer and then write down an association and another association. Um, I've got a good story about my name because my name's Samaroff. It's all obviously a little bit out of the ordinary. I don't always tell it, but I can tell it sometimes. Um, in 1905, my family, my ancestors came from New Ukraine, my great grandfather's family, and the name was Samarav, Samarav, <laughs> and they wrote it down as Sam Samaroff. But when my granddad was at school, uh, kids made fun of him. It and they'd say to him, summer off, winter on, winter on, summer off, which uh, made him moody. So he decided to change it. He changed it from summer off to summer off. And later on he went, I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I change it to something summers? Like summers, something that sounds stereotypically British. I spent all that money and effort just to change one letter. But I'm glad he did because I'm the only Anthony Samaroff in the world. So before you answer a so-called so shallow small talk question and dismiss it as shallow, think, what's the story? Can you relate a little bit deeper? Until next time, be yourself. But don't just be yourself. Be yourself and love it.